We are I. Now that beat Bill C-11 is taken into effect in Canada, and for those of you that don't know what Bill C-11 is, um, it's a bill that censors the internet. And this bill has been widely criticized, you know, through the Senate and through the House of Commons here in Canada about not only should we not be censoring the internet, you know, like that money being allocated to be able to properly educate people on how to use the internet responsibly and, you know, guidance and help for if things go awry. And Justin Trudeau's, you know, big perspective here is, you know, oh, it's going to, um, it's going to curb online bullying, you know, and misinformation. And it's like the, the greatest atrocity here is the federal governments around the world have been some of the biggest propagators of um, disinformation and misinformation, you know, in the last few years. And will we ever get to see the other side of that? And at the same time in Canada and the United States trying to make VPNs illegal. So having absolute control over the internet and what people see doesn't allow for the, the freedom of being able to think, see, understand and read. And if you have, you know, an online censorship bill that censors uh, news and media and stuff coming to Canadians. Well, how can you still buy, you know, controversial books? How can you still listen to controversial audiobooks or listen to controversial podcasts? And this is, this is the hypocrisy behind it is what are you trying to hide? Because if people are willing to be able to step outside of the mainstream media, they're probably still going to see some of what you are trying to hide anyway. Never mind that you're not trusting people to be able to make informed decisions. And to me, that's only somebody who's giving somebody half the facts, half the story. And we see this all the time from our interpersonal relationships in our lives all the way up to our federal governments, no matter what country that you live in. And now you're having Meta coming out and stating and saying like, yes, you know, we are specifically, our trials are over and we are specifically limiting access to information that Canadians see. And previous to this, like you only seen, you know, statements like this being issued against, you know, China and North Korea and Russia, you know, state media owned only, you know, information sources. We've always criticized, you know, these types of information sources in Canada, in the United States. And, you know, now we're just hand and foot with them. You know, I think that our governments have realized that this is the the true and best way to have absolute control over your population, whether or not they are forwardly, maliciously or doing it or not. But I think the seed is planted in their mind, in their heart, and their soul when they're doing things like this. Because, no, you should never be limiting my access to information. Because the thing is, it's not only right now that you are doing that and who gets to decide what news should be filtered and not, especially when we have recently found out that social media companies work on behalf of the government and they are told what to censor. Well, this is worrisome and very troublesome to me because when and if the governments are proved to be wrong, or that information people should have heard, it's not like they are going to pull that information out of the archives and make it publicly available. And if it's so far after the fact, nobody's going to care. And a prime example of this is Pfizer wanting to release all the documentation on the COVID trials 75 years from now. Well, nobody's going to really care 75 years from now. Who's going to go back into these studies and analyze this information? Because think of how many other things are going to happen in 75 years. We might not even be around it that much anymore in 75 years. Who knows what that may look like? There may be another world war. AI might have taken over. A combination of both. Who knows? 
But this is the problem that even if we do get that access to information, if it's not in real time, we see that people don't even want to participate in it. And if you are going to mold an entire nation and then you're going to mold that nation internationally that this is what you're going to do. You're going to filter and censor information to a, a small minority of people because let's face it, most people aren't even going to go out and do that research anyway because they don't have time. They used to go to mainstream media for this and they're so fed up with the bullshit that mainstream media spews. They're going to independent media sources. But these independent media sources, these are the ones that are specifically being targeted because they have controversial opinions. And we see Justin Trudeau doing this by banning rebel news at press conferences when that is one of the absolute most fundamental rights of the press in Canada is to be able to participate in press conferences like that. And Justin Trudeau has lost in court multiple times because of it. Because there is, there absolutely is no moral and legal ground to be able to ban media from participating in politics in Canada. That's something that you see. And again, these oppressive, you know, communist nations that we used to condemn, that we used to look down upon because we valued citizens having free speech and citizens having access to information. But not under the liberal government in Canada, which is the most ironic which you think the liberal government would be the ones that would want people to have access to information. And it seems like one of the agendas that the, or the multiple agendas that the uh, liberal government under Justin Trudeau only want people to see right now is how to be able to have one world government and why everybody should participate in, you know, being trans and the LBGTQ plus this, that, the next thing movement. When it's like, look, my participation in the L in the gay community, LGBTQ, trans, all this shit, is simply to the fact that I'm not going to be an asshole to those people. That's my fucking contribution. But that's my contribution to everybody. You know what? If you piss me off, no matter who you are, I'm not going to be nice to you. If you treat me like shit, no matter who you are and what you believe in, I'm not going to be nice to you. And that is the vast majority of people fucking simply said. I don't care what you are doing. But the thing is, if I go around and I promote my ideals the same way that you do, say, use COVID, for example. I've been a proponent of that COVID's been relative bullshit from the beginning and been ostracized because that from people who come from communities who allegedly scream that they are ostracized, that's why they need a day, a week, or a month, or to be socially recognized and accepted. It's like, but if you want that, you have to bestow that upon other people. You have to give that to other people to be able to receive that from them, because when you're a fucking hypocrite, and you take that away from people, or you try to tell them what to think, like, that's the worst. People smell bullshit from a mile away. You can tell somebody what to think and they'll shrug it off. You can tell somebody what to believe in and they may shrug it off. But if you keep ramming that shit down their throat, they are going to not respect you and they're going to go against you because they know they can sniff out bullshit on their bullshit meter from a mile away if you keep on doing it, which is exactly what's happening in Canada and the United States right now. It's like our government systems want us to be hyper-polarized and we need people to be able to bring us back to center. And that's one of the refreshing things about hearing RFK Jr. talk. It's like, you can tell that he's a Democrat by the uh, policies and the things that he says. But you can also tell that he's a lot more center-left than this crazy fucking far-left bullshit, which is refreshing to be able to see. And I see the same thing with Pierre Polyev here in Canada where it's like, you know, you may not agree with everything that he's saying. You may not agree with everything that RFK Jr. is saying. But you can tell they're a lot more center left and center right than fucking far right and far left. And this is what we need because the thing is that you feel like when these, when these people are talking like, I may not agree with everything that you are saying, but I can smell a lot less bullshit coming off your breath than this next man or woman. That's for damn sure. That's where we're at. Like, allow people, allow adults to be able to be adults. 
You can just because you're the federal government doesn't mean that you can treat everybody like children. And Justin Trudeau is saying here in, in Atlantic Canada that, you know, parents don't have fundamental rights and that, you know, the state, the federal government is going to tell parents what they are and what they aren't allowed to do with their children on a fundamental basic values. Why do you think Muslims and Christians have banded together here in Canada to be able to protest this shit? Like, when has that ever happened? Open up your eyes because it's the same thing that's happened like with the trucker protest and uniting Canadians and uniting people from all around the world and what, you know, has sparked the, the Dutch farmer protest movement. And a lot of this has traces back to what the Indian farmers did in India. It's like people have had enough of this shit. People have had enough, but these governments just keep on pushing, keep on pushing. And in Canada, with this online censorship bill, knowing that I can't even go on my Google feed in the morning, I can't even go on trusted news sources and not think there's some articles that are being blocked that I don't have access to, forcing me to be able to spend a certain dollar amount per month to be able to get a VPN. And I would imagine that a lot of these VPN companies have seen an explosion of sales, especially in Canada. Wild. So on this Friday, this beautiful Friday morning, when you should be able to sit there, read a newspaper, listen to the news on the radio, listen to the news on a podcast, listen to the and watch the news you know, on TV, read it on your phone. You should be able to scour all those sources and know that you're not being manipulated and just only seeing the information that somebody else wants you to see because they deem that to be good or bad for you. I said, God have their thumb on your back to keep on pushing you down. And it's not a conspiracy theory. It's actually happening, actually happening in real time. So on this Friday, what are you going to do? What are the decisions you're going to make here in Canada and anywhere else around the world? Is that like, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month or whatever it costs to get a VPN? Is that worth it to you? Knowing that you can have access to information the way you want to have access to information? 